What is going on, everybody? Welcome to today's episode of Nick Sands Presents. Today is a really big day. I am uh, going to visit a friend of mine. I, you know, I would consider her a very successful business person here in New Hampshire. She owns the Rally and Revive Studio. And she just opened a new spot called Fruition. It's like a new old spot. It's like, I'm pretty sure it's in the same building, but I don't know that for sure either. So this might get cut. And uh, we're going to go. I'm going to do a little interview. I just love seeing people bring their amazing stuff to the not so beautiful city of Manchester anymore. But I think it's, I think it's back on the come up. All right, let's, uh, let's fucking, let's see if I can find this place. I'm actually, I, I used ways to get here. I don't know. I don't know if. If I went the right, the right ways. I don't think that joke landed. Okay, moving on. I think I parked way too far away. 13. Oh. Hmm. I have no idea. I'm completely lost right now. See, look at, watch this right here. Look at. 1361. I don't think that's it. I found it. I went I went to the wrong side of the street. Hold on one second. See, it's right, it's right over there. Sorry, Audrey. This is already off to a bad start. Hi. We actually did not do this matching thing on purpose. That's just happy coincidence. Today I am here with my friend, Audrey. Actually, how would you describe yourself? I think that's the better way to go about it. That's a good question. I think that I would probably describe myself more as like holistic wellness. Just love helping people get healthy, like people who have struggled with lifelong injuries or chronic injuries, um, past injuries that just keep re resurfacing. We like being able to... Um, have conversations with them and be able to help them improve uh, over a period of time. The coolest thing about you and about your studio is I've watched you for so long. That sounds super creepy. Hold on. Let me let me rewind. Uh, I've been your friend for a long time. I've watched you kind of grow from just like starting up to where you are now. And it's really it's really amazing how far you've come and how like you're always open to learn. You're always learning. You're always trying new things. And I think that's so cool, especially as a small business owner. Now, to make you blush, I take a lot of inspiration from that. Yeah, thank you. Rally and Revive has been a business for 13 years. And there Holy shit, been, really? August, September will be 14 years. There's been a ton of changes, a ton of improvements. I'm really lucky to just have an awesome team of people who have come alongside me. We really love what we do here. What is the next thing that you're doing? You're you're looking at it right here. So this has been two years, a year and a half in the making. We just built this amazing juice bar. It's called Come Into Fruition. We are bringing really healthy and organic snacks to the greater Manchester area. What we have here is coffee, smoothies, and fresh, freshly made juice. Really, really small menu. We did that on purpose so that we could focus more on the quality of the product. It's been a a really probably 10 years, um, a dream for 10 years and to see it actually be built and operational is awesome. You put a lot of thought into everything you do, like, which is the opposite of me because I am just fucking winging it 90% of the time. I'm just hoping for the best. We've been talking about this juice bar for at least two years. What do you think the reason behind that is? I've made a lot of mistakes being a small business owner. Everything that we do has just been, um, a, very natural growth trajectory. I've had to kind of learn the hard way that when you don't think things through all the way, like you're more prone to make mistakes. I'm literally sweating right now because I make so many mistakes. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's it's like good because you look back and you're like, oh, that was a dumb decision, right? And I think all of us kind of go through that. Moving forward, you just you just know like, okay, I, I'm not going to make that mistake again. I like to strategize. The best strategy is to find things that are not going to become obsolete quickly, but to build something that's like really multifaceted that 
that serves multiple purposes. There's coffee coffee shops on every corner. Yeah. So I feel like it was a very bold decision to get into the coffee world. Right. What do you think separates you from everyone else? Last year, we took a trip overseas. We went to Italy. The coffee culture there is so different than the coffee culture here. When you go to Italy and you order a coffee, you don't typically sit down and like have your coffee and it's not filled with cream and it's not filled with sugar. It's really just espresso in a cup that people drink and they go on their merry way. Here, we have this coffee culture that's like, do you want a small? Do you want a medium? Do you want a large? And how much of that is actually coffee and how much of that is milk, sugar, and a ton of added ingredients that at the end of drinking your cup, you've got like sludge in the bottom of it. It's like a liquid cake. It is kind of like a liquid cake. What else do you guys serve other than coffee here? We have a variety of fresh juice and smoothies. So we have a red juice, a green juice, and an orange juice. And then for our smoothies, we've got tropical um, berry, and then we have a coffee smoothie that's actually pretty bomb. I would just like to go on record and say that Audrey said that I am actually skinnier in person than I look on camera and less bald. So I just want you guys to know that. It's true. Can I make, can I place an order? Yeah. Um, behind you, you'll find the menu. What do you suggest? So I actually suggest the Revival Smoothie. It's a tropical blend. It's got blueberries and ginger in it. What I'll put, I'll put like a handful of kale in there. And it's awesome because you can't even taste the kale. God, I hope you can't taste the kale. No, you can't taste the kale. It It's amazing. All right, here we go. Here's the truth. I wouldn't lie to you. I mean, I'm friends with Audrey, but if this sucks, I'm going to tell her. I would fucking make you cry on this floor right now. I would break your heart in a second. Cannot taste the kale. That is fantastic. I really like it. That's wicked good. I feel like it just had a good flavor profile overall. I feel like a lot of times smoothies, when we think about a smoothie, it either tastes like a banana or a strawberry. Like banana, generally, I'm assuming because they're so cheap, is generally like the main ingredient of smoothies. and it's But it's such an overpowering flavor that it kills it. That's super hot. Camera straw. Phenomenal. What do you think about it? I love it. That's amazing. So here, come in camera so that people can see. You know I don't I mean? even want to. She's just nervous folding. It does. It tastes, it It actually doesn't have a syrup taste. I, it always tastes like a hot chocolate, like frothiness kind of, yeah. and it doesn't have like a syrup, like ultra sweetness. Like there's like a heaviness to it that isn't, isn't typically there with syrups. That's okay. You've got a little bit. <laughs> I had somebody tell me like, oh, you have to, why don't you use Monin syrup? You have to use the Monin like everybody who's everybody who has a coffee shop. Monin uses... syrup is really weird. Right. Is it kind of makes you moan? Monin is a really weird. It's M-O-N-I-N. M O N. Oh, I was like, Jesus, that yeah. is aggressive. Yeah, it's not, it's not <laughs> kinky. We want the chocolate to enhance the coffee flavors. Right. Like when I make a chocolate cake, I add coffee into my, like a shot of espresso into my co my chocolate cake because it boasts that chocolate flavor. It, it, uh, it lifts it up. And, and so kind of the same thing with the coffee. When I order a mocha latte, I don't want, like, I still want to be able to taste my, my coffee. I don't necessarily want to be drinking a ton of chocolate and have chocolate. Like, it's not a hot chocolate with a shot of espresso. You ordered a latte with with chocolate. Carrot cake overnight oats. Yep. That's all of my favorite things. It has maple syrup in it. Like Aunt Jemima's maple syrup? No. Like <laughs> Oddly enough, as much as I'm, like, a crunchy, healthy person... I actually love me some artificial maple syrup. It is the best. I actually way prefer artificial maple syrup to real maple syrup. I 
live in New Hampshire my whole life. And for whatever reason, I just never got on board with like the real maple syrup. I always like cheap maple syrups. They're my favorite. But artificial butter flavor. <laughs> yes, the artificial butter flavor does do it. It does do it for me. It's my guilty pleasure. But there you go. You want to stir that up a little bit. And is this your recipe? You came up with this? I w- it was an inspired recipe. We made a couple of tweaks to it. You got a little bit. Yeah, that's going to happen. I'm gross. Sorry. <laughs> I feel like you're really good at doing like um, like subtle flavors. Like it's not like you can taste everything in there, but nothing is like really stealing the show, which I think is a hard thing to do, especially again. Yeah. Carrot is a very hard flavor. Like yeah. carrot really overwhelms, which is surprising because I feel like when you eat a carrot, you're not like, holy shit, the flavor. But when you put it in like juices or so different good. stuff, yeah, yeah, it definitely overwhelms it. I feel like. This hasn't done that at all. One of these days, I'm going to enter my carrot cake into like the state fair or what is that fair that's over in Hopkinton Fair? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's over in Hopkinton? Yes. <laughs> I was so one of these days, I'm going to enter my carrot cake into a competition because I honestly think that I make the best carrot cake in the world. Honestly, like if you're down with cream cheese frosting, you would love. I am literally gonna host a carrot cake competition. Do it up to put it to pit yours against the rest of the world's carrot cakes. Hey, I'll show up and I'll bring, <laughs> I'll bring my best self, my and my best version of my carrot cake because it is. <laughs> I stand by it. What kind of I really appreciate the uh, the level of ego it takes to, to come out with that. Uh, thank you so much for today. Yeah, this was fantastic. Uh, when can people start coming here? And where so, can people find you? Yeah, we're going to have um, Instagram, fruition underscore New Hampshire is our Instagram. They can find us on Facebook. Um, we're going to have our grand opening on April 13th. Um, we're hiring. So if anybody wants a job, um, they can come here hone in on their barista skills and be a part of something super awesome um instagram facebook and april 13th awesome we will see you then cool okay bye guys bye everybody hey everybody so this is just one last time just real quick i just wanted to take a minute to talk about something that happened while we were in there so while we were sort of setting up for our interview Audrey stopped me basically and walked outside and invited a homeless man who had been t- who happened to be walking by into the store. And I didn't obviously I didn't shoot it. I think that's weird when people do that, but I think that it really highlights the importance of small business in a community. Um, I don't think that Audrey is looking to make a million dollars. I don't think that she wants to be I don't think she's trying to compete with Starbucks. If you're watching this, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Go down, say hi, grab a coffee. She's a great person, and her whole operation is really pretty amazing. So um, thank you so much, Audrey, for having me out today. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you. Ooh, I burped. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.